What's up everyone? Tales of the Empire comes out tomorrow. I got the chance to join a roundtable interview with Meredith Salinger, who plays Barisafi, along with several other Star Wars creators and podcasters. This is the full discussion. There aren't any major spoilers or anything, but as usual, you can glean some hints from something like this. So if you want to watch Tales of the Empire with as little knowledge as possible, this is your warning. That said, enjoy the interview. Hi, George and Josh. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, thank you for being able to speak with us. We really appreciate it. We wanted to we wanted to ask. It's been over a decade since you played this character um, uh, in 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 the Clone Wars. What was the difficult? What was the most difficult part of returning to the character? And what did you find to be most rewarding about revisiting her? Well, the most rewarding thing about revisiting Barris Afi was just being back in the booth with Dave Filoni. <laughs> he's so creative. He's so interesting. He always has such incredible character arcs. Um, there really wasn't much difficult to come back to because I feel like Barris has been in the minds of me, of course, because I love her, but the fans since the Clone Wars ended, everyone is always asking about her. My friend's kids are watching the show right now, so it doesn't feel like there's any separation. It doesn't feel like it's been a long time. And and we can see that Ahsoka, you know, her character has gone on to have a whole other show. I think these characters have made such an impact that they're still here and Barris is still very deep in me and I love her and I it, it was just a joy to be back. Hi Meredith thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us. Oh look you have an English accent just like Barris. Funny that. Um, Funny that. How did you hear from Dave or how did you hear that you were coming back? I've kept in touch with Dave um, we've become friends and every now and then you know we see each other a lot and we talk about Barris, we talk about the show, um, but it, nothing has ever been official. He's sort of, he keeps everything under wraps. So when I got an email that said they want to have you back for Barris, I was just like, yes, it was just the greatest because I love her and I love, I love playing her. And um, it, it was fantastic. It was just the best moment. Like you said, Star Wars fans have been obsessed with Barris Afi for over a decade, what happened to her? And you say that she hasn't ever really left your mind. So over a decade in between the Clone Wars and now, did you ever develop your own headcanon for what Barris was up to or what happened to her until Dave finally filled you in? Well, listen, I've been listening to fans say, how could you turn on Ahsoka? How could you do this? And I think um, I've always felt like Barris just had this incredible moral compass and did what she felt was right for the Jedi order. I feel like she, uh, so for me, I have my own opinions on why she did what she did back in the Clone Wars. And um, I love where Dave Filoni has taken her character. The arc during Tales of the Empire is astonishing. I don't think we know what she's th what she's been thinking while she's been in jail this whole time. And I think the things that she's presented with are about to, uh, show her depth of character that she's developed while in prison. Yes. Hi, I'm Charlotte. Hi, Meredith. Yeah. Thanks so much for talking with us Thank today. Um, I was wondering, what do you think makes Barris such a compelling character that fans are so obsessed with? I think what makes Barris so compelling is that she really starts with such a desire to do what's right. Um, I think she really believes deeply in the old Jedi text. I think she really appreciated her training under Luminara Unduli, who taught her how to be the best Jedi. Um, and I think after her time hanging out with Ahsoka and Anakin, who are more free thinkers, not everything was done by the book. I think she's compelling because she starts to listen to her own moral compass as she's going through things. And she starts to have different opinions. I think she might've been influenced by Palpatine's uh, propaganda that he put on the on the Jedi um, about the Jedi rather and I think her faith in the Jedi starts to waver a little bit she's compelling because she she has a moral dilemma and she thinks she's doing the right thing um, and perhaps the way she went about it wasn't the right way but she was very strong in her convictions. And I think in Tales of the Empire, you see her struggle with what to do with the options that are presented to her. 
And I think a lot of people go through that. I think you, uh, you know, your choices define your destiny. And I think what we learn in Tales from the Empire is that you always have a choice. You always have a choice to whatever path you're going to go down. And it's a good message. Hiya. Uh, question. By the end of this run of episodes, it feels like Barris has learned as much by being an Inquisitor as he has learned by being a Jedi. Does that make any sense? How do you feel about that? I think every situation you're in is a teaching moment. I think the people that you surround yourself with, you can either uh, learn and appreciate the goodness you learn from them, or you can fall into hate that people that you're surrounded by, or you can see things that you disagree with. And every situation will form your sense of self deeper and deeper. If you choose to go by your, your center, if you really, be, if you are really dedicated to your own moral structure, every scenario that you are in will shape who you are. Hey, hey, Meredith, this is Sarah and Richard from Skywalking Through Neverland. It's oh, great yeah. having you back in Star Wars. Oh, thank you. It's just the best to be back playing Barris. Now, I don't believe we've seen the last of Barris. Now, if it were up to you, where would you want to see Barris go from here? <laughs> um, well, I can't spoil what happens at the end, but if there was a fantasy world where I could create more Barris, um, you know, she's got a lot she has to deal with, with how her relationship with Ahsoka ended. And I think Barris Afi and Ahsoka Tano need to have um, some time together to rehash and explain and reconnect and it it would be like the two of them going off on adventures together because i think they really do have a strong bond and i think they believe in the same things ultimately hi um i'm hey. keith from Fall galaxy nice to meet you nice so meet you. now that we've seen bear selfie's journey from the clone wars to the ending in tales of the empire what do you know about bears that you didn't know before the show i think watching her grow from being a padawan learner to where she is now, there's a huge age change for her. And I think when you start as a young child, you look at the world in a certain way. And I think as you go through life and you make mistakes as everyone does, you learn from them. And I think as an older uh, person, you have, you have a chance to review your life and, be the person you really want to be. And um, I've learned from her that there's always, there's always a path. There's always a choice. There's always a way to better yourself. There's always another chance. Um, and I think everyone needs to know that at any time in their life, they can always make things better. Hi, Maria. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Um, Tales of the Empire features a number of cameos from different Inquisitors, including the Grand Inquisitor, the Fourth Sister, Space Marak, Radix. the uh, yes, the unnamed uh, Inquisitor from Tales of the Jedi. Do you have a favorite Inquisitor? Oh wow! Do I have a favorite Inquisitor? You know, uh, I never really thought about the Inquisitors that much. Um, I'm always like, it's either like the bad guy, like I, the Inquisitors to me feel like a group. Um, now, obviously, from Tales of the Empire, I've learned that they're specific individuals. I didn't really know about the Inquisitors that much. Um, this is very telling. I think Jason Isaacs as the main Inquisitor the, is phenomenal. He's such a brilliant actor. And I think um, Barris Offee gets to uh, train under him. And I think she's had very interesting masters. She had Luminara and Dooley, who was incredibly by the book. And I think uh, the Grand Inquisitor also, there's a there's a way of behavior that he's teaching as well. And I think um, she's being taught by the best of the best for what they are. You know, in the Inquisitors, here's the person who's really going to, he's not going to pull any punches with you. He wants you to step up. And I think requiring Barris to step up and push herself to a place she might not want to go or she's afraid to go, but she does. Um, it's, it's fascinating to me. 
Hello. Thank you also for your time. Real quick question. We're certainly not going to spoil anything because that would be a no-no because we want everybody to enjoy this series. But for you, there's this interesting dichotomy that happens with Barris as a character. How do you think she would define the concept of loyalty? I think through her trajectory, there is a loyalty to herself. I think there's a loyalty to her inner beliefs. I think there's a loyalty to her morality. I think uh, she has an intense desire to do what is right. And while she displays her loyalty to the Jedi as she's learning, while she displays her loyalty to the choices that and the people that she needs to in Tales of the Empire, I think ultimately her loyalty is to her strength, to her beliefs. Yeah, uh, we had a question about the the development of of the character's arc over time. Um, obviously, her her character arc unfolds in Tales of the Empire. Um, was there ever another opportunity for the character to pop up before this, whether it be in a video game that didn't come to fruition or a show or anything like that? Um, I I don't know. I all I know is that Legos did an amazing job making little Lego figures of her. <laughs> And so I've been playing with the Legos with my nieces and nephews. And um, so for me, there's been a lot of bears happening in between. But for for the show, finding her again um, in jail since the Clone Wars, um, nothing's really happened for her other than like sitting there stewing in her thoughts and making a conscious decision in her mind of, who she feels that she is and what changes she wants to make. So any storyline in between the two would have been her own internal monologue. Going back to Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim in 2015, Dave Filoni said on stage that the original plans for your character was to die in The Wrong Jedi. Uh, But Dave decided that he had plans for your character and cut the scene. So I just wondered whether you'd ever talk to Dave about that and whether that had ever come up before. And did you ever talk to Dave about the possibilities and where your character could could potentially go? I, I do believe I remember when that happened and I was very excited. Um, and I've spoken with Dave because we're dear friends, but he's uh, he holds his cards very close to the chest. And I think his imagination is always working. I think he has a vi- look, he has an entire universe of people that he is weaving a fabric of every character together because one character's actions 100% affect another person's, another character's actions. And so I think he has this grand vision. Um, And as he's shifting his imagination for all of it, the characters might shift and what he thought he might wanna do back then shifts as he develops another character. Um, so I know he had something in mind, but no, he never shared with me what that would be. And of course, I'm always like, please tell me what's going to happen to Barris. I mean, I love Barris. And so the more I can play her and inhabit her character is a joy for me. If Barris at the end of her journey and in, in her shorts and tales of the empire could go back and give Barris the Padawan some advice while she was struggling during the Clone Wars, what do you think she would say? I, I I think there would have been some whisperings about how to go about handling situations in a more diplomatic way as opposed to a violent way, which is interesting because I think that's all Barris ever wanted. Um, when she was upset with the Jedi Order, it was because they were moving to a more military style way of handling conflict and, uh, and dismantling their peacekeeping notions. And I think um, for her she wanted to make that happen, but she fell into the thing she didn't want to be. So I think whisperings of, you know, an adult to a child, like make better choices, (laughs) make better choices. 